Oh good, just the most horrendous art style, but this time with a proper budget behind it. The perfect example for a terrible episode. It is Mars Needs Moms. And I'm gonna be pronouncing it with that horrible vowel the whole time. This is an Image Movers production. With so many movies that look just this uncanny and creepy, it's almost a wonder on how they did manage to succeed with Polar Express. How did we let them get away with a Tom Hanks child? This studio is the passion project behind Robert Zemeckis, who's doing everything he can to disparage his legacy from Back to the Future. Also, it's apparently a Disney production this time around? Alright, let's get into this. So we begin on Mars, what a surprise, as we see the Mars rover out and about, but beneath it there is industry, there is mystery, there is facilities, ugly, ugly metallic facilities down here. Why did the monkey literally come out as first? Welcome to the vibe of Mars Needs Moms, where we're next gonna see that baby child being witnessed on a monitor by this thing. And somehow, it gets even uglier. I don't know who designed the characters behind these alien Martians, but why do they look like they are into drinking piss? Like, look at their faces and tell me I'm wrong. So they've locked onto a scan of Earth. Over to a very overexcitable child bouncing in front of an ice cream van for some reason. What, is that going to be played by Tom Hanks too? And they scroll through more mums, shouting at their children for some reason. Lingering a long time on pretty much every shot and you know where this goes. They focus on the main mum. Oh my god, she's so commanding! She's the one! And on Earth it's all just an argument about doing the bins and shutting the door and answering the phone? Ugh. <sighs> I have to do everything around here. God, what a nightmare. The dad is calling on the phone saying he's not going to make it back in time. You know, it's this cliche. Dad's flight is cancelled by the heavy rain. But hey, the mum says if the child finishes their dinner, you can watch zombies on pay-per-view. God, this movie is dated. But then the child goes on to not finish their dinner and kick up a right old fuss about it. No one likes zombies. They're an abomination. Uh, I like zombies. But yeah, after this introduction, this kid is just so whiny and annoying over the most mundane of things as well. The kid then goes on to feed the food to the can and just look at his face while doing it. <laughs> the cat immediately vomits up the broccoli, so he's caught. Sent to bed for poisoning the cat. Now he's jumping on the bed to be told off again! I hate this gremlin child! Why is his head like that? This child alone looks like a Martian! Yeah, well my life would be so much better if I didn't have a mom at all! What a horrendous child. And that's our protagonist, folks. Who sleeps on three pillows anyway? But yes, overnight he begins to feel regretful. He's gonna go and tell her he's sorry, only hours and hours later after peacefully sleeping without the guilt. Whereby he sees the light in her room, the mom is missing and... Whoa! Mom? She's been taken by aliens! What a surprise! Gee golly whiz, I wonder why that could be! We see the rocket ship and the mom sleeping inside of the pod. So nice of them to include a glass window specifically so we can see her. You should really aim for the glass, mate. And then the kid is accidentally taken up, shoved into the landing gear as it all compacts in. Yeah! And somehow he's not being sucked down by the force of gravity for a good long while. The rocket shoots through a portal and then lands on Mars, where we see there's a secret base coming up, again with so much glass. The excerpts of space are literally just out there, this is dangerous. Granny Piss Gremlin over here never speaks English, so you're just kind of sitting haphazardly listening to shrieks and rambles. On the one hand, I guess you could say it's dialogueless, but you know, it's not exactly the nuance of Wally, is it? Wally. And then the girl alien here seems empathetic. She's clearly meant to be the one with the innocent vibe on the attachment. However, you kind of lose that essence when immediately afterwards you can practically see the entire curvature of her ass. The boy is spotted, put into a pod, and that's it! That's the two hours! Mom gets extracted, or whatever the aliens plan to do with her, and we hit the credits. Mars needed moms, and now they got one. The end. Mark? No, that's vomit, but I understand the confusion. I In reality, the lights turn off. Why were they ever on? And the doors open for him. Randomly. Time to explore the mystery of this Mars base. 
There's low gravity and the lights turn off. Low gravity, oh, keep it together. Riveting, eh? And there's a hacker man giving directions to jump down a chute. And so he does. <laughs> Jesus Christ, they're really throwing him like a ragdoll. I think I feel bad for the poor mocap actor. And the boy lands in the scrapyard, kinda like Wally. Well, the ending of Toy Story 3, you see? A world of trash! It is awesome! You said it, kid. Turns out there's an underground society here of chimp-like Martians? And it turns into a game of charades of mom-related things, and they all follow- what is this? And then they all go in to hug him. And then he's abducted again by a spider robot with the exposure setting on too high for the camera. There's just like a lot that happens all at once. You kind of just witness. This is a movie to witness, you know? He's hot air ballooned up to the hacker man and then smashed down onto the flimsy bridge. This child is unlikable, whiny, and now just strange stuff happening all the time. This isn't a very likable movie, is it? Like, I get it's going for mystery, but like, why is it all so creepy? You like video games, man? Check it out! And no amount of gaming references will make this idea work, you know? It feels like they're trying to bait out the children in the audience. So now we meet Gribble, a strange, ugly human to add to the collection. He's here to stop interplanetary communism from the Ronald Reagan Secronauts. What? Why is that the line? Gribble then goes on to give the child a weight belt, he laughs at the aliens being pranked on his monitor, then he adds a Martian translator. Later on he also gives him like a stopwatch and so it's just like he just gives him a bunch of gear. And Gribble is just a classic, annoying, weird bro gamer dude, you know? He just wants to hang out 24-7, playing games and watching TV forever. An incredibly flat, one-dimensional character, clearly made for a kid's movie. <laughs> but again, it's not the nuance of Wally here. And on the side of things, he's hiding the story of the mom situation. I don't want to tell you, and you can't make me, okay? Why is he so immature? It, like, it's so off-putting. This movie is creepy all the way along. I don't think there's any character that makes me comfortable. But he finally tells the truth. Fact is, Mars needs moms. Mark? No, that's vomit, but I understand the confusion. Oh, come on. What the heck does that mean? So, there's hatchling Martians and their terrible mothers. And the ones upstairs are all female. So how does a species function like that? They build nanny bots to raise the children, of course. One mother bot per child. It's completely non-reusable after that. Who knew mothering was so hard, huh? <laughs> And they mean to find someone who's really good at controlling children. They would have slim pickings in a modern world. Furthermore, we get to see Mom's memories. As Gribble goes on to exposite that the Martians only really care about order and discipline. And with the memory extraction machine, they take out that essence and, and put it into the nannybots. Through a solar wind system. Okay, we don't need to go into that much detail. When the sun rises, it happens and extracts. So with the mission of, we gotta save Mom, off they go running before time runs out. Don't expect much from the plot. Just gonna tell you now. Less than seven hours, that's all? God, I hope this movie isn't that long. Also, there is no fatigue. Like, this is an all-nighter of a prompt. I guess there's a lot of adrenaline, but it doesn't really work. Also, on top of like the three or four equipment gear we've seen, there's also a helmet now. This is gonna be gripple-tastic. <laughs> this is like a cringe movie speedrun, honestly. We then come to hear about other aspects of this world. There is the CIS, the supervisor's secret security. And then the, the boy comes out as saying, anything else you forgot to mention? As if this hasn't already been a like 10, 15 minute chunk of exposition. And they essentially say no. But then there is more as Gribble goes on to exposite to us and the robot spider spy machine that this is just a ruse. Getting the kid to be chased for 10 minutes to save him to be eternally grateful to Gribble to then stick around. But alright, time to finally explore the bloody Mars base. <laughs> and somehow already we're one third done in the movie. Already. Nothing started yet. The closest thing to action we've seen is being able to conduct a colonoscopy with just our eyes so far. I mean, either nothing started or it's just been a half an hour drag. So, he's sneaking about in his Ready Player One suit. The kid hops into some army formation and nobody behind him questions it, and the granny piss gremlin runs everything around here. The supervisor hates the graffiti tags around here, and the mom's at the top of the citadel. 
Rubble continues to explain the flaw in the boy's plan and says that there's a trap door that he'll release him in. And of course, because he's explained the whole thing, it's not gonna happen now. I mean, I get it, it's just because I've watched too many movies and I'm not the demographic, but also, why is it written so immaturely, this movie? And then, whoa, whoa, he's, he's trapped at the metal detector gate, wow. Gribble then goes on to say, run like hell, even though the next move is to open the trap door, which requires him to stay still. But I do like this next line, honestly, it's the best part of the movie. I pushed the wrong one. Oh my gosh! And so now the security can even spot where he's being spoken from. As the child is now told to run and trapped in an elevator, he's on the run. <sighs> this next sequence is all about Gribble giving poor directions as the kid runs around and then Gribbles is caught, calling out to his mommy. There's a part where the kid is trapped in a cupboard and dangles out the window. Somehow the guy chasing him looks out the window and doesn't spot him with the slowest neck movement of all time apparently. Until we get to... Enter the lady alien, the tagger, spraying with a rainbow flourish as the boy falls off the wall and she catches him. All of her voice for some reason has a high pass effect added onto it and then also not for some reason. And as for her dialogue... Not the fuzz! Ugh. The whole dialogue in so much of this movie is just cringy young bait I think it's trying to be. Whilst at the same time the messaging behind this movie is aimed for like five year olds. They really messed up the demographic for this movie, man. So she dives down the elevator after the boy. Now she can fully speak English, and they're watching a TV show. Uh-huh. It's a chrysanthemum, baby! Alongside being aimed for five-year-olds and written for 12-year-olds, why does every shot show her ass? So she's obsessed with some 60s hippie show, obsessed with all the color and psychedelia. God, she'd hate the modern world. And the kid goes around and immediately calls out the end art character development, I guess. I was wrong. Because... She looks after me and she tells me what to do. And now the kid's going on to just list all the things that she does in the hallway as they're walking. And it's a very immature way of describing a mother, for sure. And the final note being the sentimental one, sure, is... She loves me. So now that that's established, they jump down shoot number three back in with the trash where they find everything has been trashed. We see that Gribble has finally been taken, and oh my god, there's only five and a half hours left of time. Over an hour has passed already? Oh no, actually, there's somehow just one hour left. I mean, I know a Mars day is longer than an Earth day by 40 minutes, but this timeline does not make sense. The kid then goes on to spot a capsule of Gribble's human things. His name is George Ribble, wow. They find that spider pet whose name is T Two Cat, and the aliens now have a firing squad, and that's where Gribble is going. Okay, forget all the magical alien technology they have. Just a firing scrod in the middle of the movie. Isn't this aimed for five-year-olds as well? It's kind of dark. And I wonder why past aliens were shot. So immediately Gribble's here, ready to be executed. He's listing a bunch of cool things that mean he shouldn't get shot. None of it really makes him a fun character. And then the kid swings in. How does this work? Where did he come from? The lady now also gets a gun, magically prepping to shoot. Her aim is still in frame for those wanting a quick sniff, as she chucks a piece to the kid and is ballooned away. They all jump through the floor and dodge a billion bullets. You kinda gotta, you know, <laughs> suspend your disbelief at this point. And then they all fall to their deaths. What? No, that's vomit, but yeah, how haven't they died up to this point? It, like, I know gravity is also different on Mars, but these are some crazy falls that they're constantly taking. Thank you for making it halfway through this video. I'm sorry for everything you've gone through so far, but there's still another half to do. This is the point where I tell you to check below to see whether you are subscribed if you want to keep up with any other terrible animated movies we cover. We also do general movie news for all of 2024 this year, so give it a consider. You can also give us suggestions for future terrible movies over on our Discord server, but otherwise, I'll let you get back to the terrible Mars Needs Moms. Ugh. Oh, so we come to learn that it's only males that are down here, and the males only really know how to hug, which is why they chuck them down here. They continue to be chased down while in the trash, the boys fall into the waters. It's all very fast, to be honest. The pacing of this movie is off. But now there's a luminous jellyfish place. Gribble-tastic, as George defines it. And now we come to almost a conflict. Gribble wants to just stay here and rebuild as he is, never wanting to go back up to the above lands again. Whereas Milo retorts with... Your name's George. Wow, he learned the law from the one time he'd stopped in his tracks these last 50 minutes. You see this? No, it's transparent. 
And he's like, how could you possibly know how I feel? Because he's going through the exact same thing as you right now. Like, it doesn't take a genius to work out. We've already been told, and this is like the stupidest dialogue you can ever put in this movie. Conceptually. Just because you don't have a mother doesn't mean you don't know how to grow some IQ points. In fact, they're even going to go on to explain that it's the exact same thing that they went through as we go into a uh, a flashback of Gribble's mum, where they explain it's not fair that when they take your mum, you know, you can't find her. Gribble ended up on Mars as well. They strap her up to a machine, and then she was disintegrated. I've never seen my mum again. It's like the motivations are somehow in reverse. You should be out here trying to help. Emotionally, you're invested. To which, I guess then, Gribble does have a change of heart because he flashbacks, but it's like it was new information to him. Why would he not have the same motivations before a flashback? But now he's all like, we're gonna go get your mom. It's not really a change of heart though, is it? This is all just such poor and simplistic writing. Ah, also Key is the name of the alien. Come on, we gotta beat feet. On kink popularity? I mean, I can tell you're really trying. There is a weird undertone to pick up from this movie, even if it is just meant to be an inside joke for the parents watching. By this weird phrase, what she really means is run. Gribble does the whole bad means good phrase cliche. It's, it's, you know, just all your classic stupid dialogue in one place. And then they turn around with... I think you're amazing. You met less than a minute ago! I think the director's just trying to fuel some Rule 34 fanfic. They then go to knock over some vines and showcase a Martian family as a whole big hieroglyph. And the alien's like, what are parents? Whoa, we had a family? And the kid's like, yeah. If you Martians had parents, you wouldn't have to kidnap. Up to this point, the Martians had always been raised by machines, or so they were told. When clearly that wasn't always the case. The lesson here, kids, is to have unprotected sex with the opposite sex. And with these character designs, that's clearly the intention. Reproduce as God intended. Or Martian God. So now it's a race to the finish. There's people being checked at security. The jail is right next to the silo on the spaceship. So they're gonna go to jail on purpose. But also to make progress, need to take out the guards. It's a whole heist thing. They immediately get caught. They tranquilize the guards. They're at the jail pods. Wingnut, one of the males, gets spotted along the way. And they release him from the pod. They question the concept of hugging. And then accidentally open the pods to all of the males. Oh, that's a lot of dudes. I've seen how this plays out on the internet. Who let the dogs out? <laughs> oh, duh. There's a new batch of young baby boys going down. They're going to be all alone without the hairy tribe guys, even though they have each other. So they need to save the hatchlings. And so then they, they, they some do. That's just like another thing. It's slightly odd that the boys all have dreadlocks and are shown as stupid tribesmen. You know, like, is there... Is there something problematic to that? It's interesting how almost offensive every Martian has managed to be, with the women being so incredibly over-sexualized and the men being so overly idioticized. Is that a word? We'll go with it. Anyway, they go to the rocket, they zap the door panel. Milo is now on the surface, hopping towards his mom, just like Gribble did back in the day. All the while, Key is getting close to Gribble. I dig it when you change color. What an odd kink they're gonna have. And the over-sexualized woman and a grubby looking guy is totally some sort of fan service somewhere. Milo then drops into a chasm. He's almost dropped, but is caught by Gr Gribble. Uh, he teleported, I guess. And then Gribble goes on to rocket them over there. Why? How? Granny Piss Lady Martian then finally spots them. And again, is never speaking a language, which kind of loses something on her, you know? She's just such a generic, shrieking villain. There's no character development, there's no interesting, cool lines. She's just Granny Piss Lady. But now we're here. Milo gets in, struggling to get our mom out. Gribble, on the other hand. <laughs> delays the soldiers that are there. The big main rocket they want to use to leave accidentally starts going off because the passcode was saying the name Gribble. All the while, the males come bursting through the chutes for some reason, kicking all of the nanny bots over. All right, children are landing on the floor. They're zapping the nurses. We've only got two minutes for the rocket ship. The mom wakes up. Ah, she must have seen the piss ladies. Granny goes ahead to shoot through the door that's locked. It was that easy before, are you kidding me? And just as Granny aims at Milo, we get... Oh my god, it's the emotional height of the movie. The rocket's firing without them. The mom grabs him, puts her helmet onto him. No, no, no. 
Well, now he's stuck with that helmet forever. He'll never be able to take that off, even in the air. And the mom dies on the surface. Could be worse, kid. If we were following the laws of physics, her eyes would probably explode out as well from the pressure. All the babies and the males are watching through the window. Gribble runs past them. And oh my god, he finds a hidden underground helmet from his time from the last time. We saw it during the flashback. Uh, uh, at least it's a valid Deus Ex, I guess. And it fixes her up. She had an oxygen deficiency for like a minute there. Like, what are the effects of that? Are we sure there's not brain damage coming up? You saved me. Gribble's right there, man. And the kid, of course, has come full circle, being like, my life wouldn't be better without you. What a surprise. I can't even dress myself yet. The rocket returns somewhat and they chase towards it before Granny bursts out of the ground. The movie's oh, still going. You will surrender it. That's like her only line. Not even a good villain line, is it really? And we get the confrontation of the background of the Martians. This is the way it's always been. No, she lied to us. Look! We can't see anything! It's transparent! And so she reveals the baby glyphs to the soldiers. They're not meant to be raised by machines, they're meant to be raised by family. Would soldiers really just stop on the spot like that from just mild evidence, really? Well, I guess they must all be really horny since that's practically the canon ending of this movie. They make a whole beat about how we don't have time to raise the hatchling. The males never helped, only dancing and playing. The soldiers don't make any arrests. They do, in fact, stop to the glyphs. And the evildoer is you, piss granny lady. I mean, it still asks a million questions. Like, where do the hatchlings come from? Do they not still fornicate and reproduce? Is, is this ever explained? Is there a sperm extraction thing as well? I'm sure the internet has a deep running explanation somewhere, but uh, I'm scared to look, you know? Everyone celebrates. They portal back to Earth, land in some forests. Gribble and Key choose to go back to Mars. We'll hang out with Key. And God, I hate that this is canon. They have more final goodbye things like we'll keep in touch with best buds, yada yada, pen pals, Xbox Live, some reference to early gaming, I'm sure, that's meant to be endearing but isn't really. The mother in her rare line and an actual sense of endearment says, Your mother would be proud of you. But I imagine she'll also follow that up with, But also, who are you? I've been awake five minutes. To which they then finally end off their goodbyes with... Ugh. The rocket leaves, Milo and Mom are back returning to their house. Apparently this entire forest was just in their garden or something. It's the Happy Days epilogue. Dad. He's still the favorite parent, I bet though. Milo goes on to take out a randomly placed bin that shouldn't have been dirty in the first place because no one's been around to make a mess this whole time since the last time the bins were taken. And the dad's like, wow, he's a really changed kid now. And then Milo shoots the bin. He hasn't learned environmental burning factors yet, and he never will. Ugh. This has just been a terrible, basic, ugly movie throughout. Ugly is really emphasized, with an uncomfortable sexual undertone and strange messagings on gender, kind of. The males now are suddenly being parents, so that kind of removes that whole conflict without really addressing it. You just needed to exile them for a few decades and then they were fine again? I don't know. Oh, also, the granny is pissed on. Them. See? I told you they had faces for piss! Gribble sends images to NASA. I assume he also has an OnlyFans he also sends to NASA, teaching the ways of deep alien biology from somehow the outside. And then we come to see that the kid was, in fact, an adult whose voice is pitched up later in the behind the scenes. It really could have been Tom Hanks the entire time. It probably added to the uncanny nature of absolutely everything. The demographic for this movie has really been absolutely everywhere. I don't know who this is for. It's like the messaging was aimed way lower than what it should have been. This was meant to be like baby's first movie, but then it's inappropriate to have these crazy over-sexualized body figure designs and showing every single angle in every single shot. The aesthetics are just too creepy and weird and sexual for young kids. The messaging's too young and babyish for anyone else. And then I don't think there's anything for the parents, unless they wanted to jack off without their kids noticing. It's just a bit of a gross, grimy movie. Mars needs moms. I think Mars needs moms needs help, if you ask me. But thankfully, that is all from us for now. So I'm gonna end it off there. My name's been Daz. Thank you for making it to the very end of this video. Let me know what future terrible movies you'd like me to cover. As I said earlier, I would consider doing this every weekend soon. I'm getting back into the routine to have consistent pre-produced timeless videos like this. So let me know what you'd love to see, and I'll be giving it a consider. And on that note, I shall see you 
in a little bit.